Welcome to Slash Detroit for Friday, November 1st, 2013. Today's episode is brought to you by the political analyst Bubba Sparks and his opinion of Benny Napoleon's recent social media campaign. Deadline Detroit has rounded up some of the uglier comments, including the following tweets. If Mr. Duggan becomes mayor, he will forward Governor Rick Snyder's agenda onto Detroiters. And the only thing that got turned around at DMC was Mike's pocket. Boom! My favorite is the following. People of Detroit are smarter than the lies Mr. Duggan tells voters in order to get elected. He will say and do anything. We'll see just how smart Detroiters are this Tuesday, as polls show Duggan heading towards a landslide victory. In fail jail news, the county is now suing the project manager of the downtown boondoggle for $154 million for making unauthorized changes to the project and an assortment of alleged incidences of incompetence, including presenting plans that didn't include doors on the jail cells. The project has been cancelled and a commission has tentatively chosen a bid by Dan Gilbert's Rock Ventures as the future developer of the site. Gilbert plans to buy the land and buildings surrounding the site for about $50 million and create a retail, hotel, entertainment and residential complex on the site with a total price tag of about $500 million. The Detroit Public Schools has seen a welcome uptick in enrollment. The district has close to 2,000 more students this year than this time last year, a 14% increase. However, the increase is leading to overcrowding at some schools like East English Village, where class sizes can reach as high as 50 students. The district once had 300,000 students, but that number now stands closer to 50,000 due to Detroit's population loss, students opting to attend charter schools or suburban schools, and entire schools being taken out of DPS and moved into the Educational Achievement System, the statewide district for failing schools. I have some fantastic news for fans of the Packard plant, and that news is that the plant won't be sold for $6 million to a crazy woman from Texas. Dr. Jill Van Horn was the winning bidder for the Mammoth Complex and planned to turn it into a facility to manufacture modular homes and offices. It sounded like the county was going to get a fat check, but the deal fell through and Van Horn didn't make a required deposit. And why is this good news? Because based on two rambling press releases issued by Van Horn, she sounds nuttier than a fruitcake. I will quote from them, keeping the author's original grammar. Although the process to convert the potential energy in the water into electricity is well known, the one that gives Detroit's assets the form required to put it in motion. More production is not known. In other words, while we know that it is the pin stop, turbaned, generators, transformers, and wires of the hydroelectric energy system that convert the potential energy of the lake until it is fixed in an accessible form, we do not know where to find the key process that connects the economic potential of that Detroiters can benefit from. The county is now negotiating with other bidders. 